Hi there, I'm Thomas, and welcome to Global Trends Library. This June was the hottest in American history, the 116-degree heat melted power cables in Portland, Oregon and smashed previous temperature records, Seattle recorded an all-time high of 108 degrees as to British Columbia, at a whopping 121 degrees, so it should come as no surprise, but as the world warms more and more people are installing, air conditioning, global energy demand for cooling has more than tripled since 1990 and without stricter efficiency standards, it could more than double between now and 340, globally, it's expected that 4 billion people will buy their first air conditioner by 2050, but air conditioning itself is a major contributor to global warming. It uses a massive amount of electricity and can leak potent greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, you actually will get into this pretty strong feedback effect where, you know it's hotter people want more air conditioning when it just gets worse and worse. Altogether building operations that is heating, cooling, and lighting, accounts for 28% of the world's total greenhouse gas emissions. That's more than the entire transportation sector, that means, we were making progress on the transportation side, we're making progress on the generation side, but the issue is that buildings, used so much energy and emitted so much carbon, and there was no real solution for it, but Skycool Gradient and a number of other companies are working on it figuring out how to apply new technologies to the traditionally inflexible heating and cooling industry finance the upfront costs, communicate the value to property owners and make sure that it's all done equitably. The reason why people aren't adopting these technologies is because one is too much of a hassle and two it's too expensive. And so we set out to solve those two problems we're trying to upgrade, modernize and digitize, how to apply computer science to the problem of analyzing buildings, and if one can do that. Can one get Wall Street and pension funds, infrastructure funds and the federal government to invest the trillions of dollars that we need to reduce greenhouse gas emissions? The energy that it takes to heat and cool buildings, and where that energy comes from doesn't get a ton of attention, but this is how it works. AC runs on electricity. A lot of it, a small window AC unit can consume more power than 4 refrigerators and central AC in a single home consumes more power than 15 refrigerators. For the US, Electric grid is getting greener as more renewables come online. Most of the country's electricity is still generated by fossil fuels with natural gas being the most common. And in places like China and India, where the urban middle class is soaring and demand for AC units is to their electric grids rely heavily on coal, the dirtiest fossil fuels. And so right now between 5 and 10 percent of people in India have air conditioners, and by 2050 the expectation is that 70 to 80 percent of the population will and so that's literally going to be almost a billion people that are going to buy air conditioners. Right now, air conditioning accounts for about 8.5 percent of global electricity consumption, and researchers have predicted that by mid-century, the global energy demand for cooling will overtake the global demand for heating. But currently, Heating still reigns supreme in terms of energy use, and that's a big problem to central heating for commercial buildings and homes, mainly relies on natural gas, which means a greener electric grid won't solve the problem. Basically, we need to find a fundamentally different way to heat buildings, and what better insulation and ventilation should be implemented. The crux of the issue is how to electrify space and water heating. A lot of people are very familiar with the need to electrify vehicles but there's a much smaller focus on buildings, and there's been very slow adoption of existing technologies that the current rate and pace that we're at will actually take 500 years to retrofit every home in America that piece is way too slow. Many companies in this space are particularly excited about heat pumps and all-electric device but despite its name, it can both heat and cool homes much more efficiently than traditional systems, and have seen technical improvements in recent years that allow them to work better in cold climates. Essentially, they work just like an air conditioner that can run in reverse. Basically, what a heat pump does is it lets the internal refrigerant cycle go in both directions, and so it's the addition of a valve that can send the hot refrigerant to the indoor side instead of the outdoor side, it pulls heat from the cold outdoor air, and it pushes it into your room. When it works as an AC, it pulls heat out of your room and then pushes it to the outdoors. You can plug it into your windows or walls, or there's giant ones that you plug into your roof and your ventilation system of your building. But the key is they run on 100% electricity. Black Power, a Brooklyn-based climate startup working in retrofit buildings in low-income neighborhoods. The company installs heat pumps for no money down and property owners pay Black Power back over a 10 to 15 year period. These monthly payments are ideally offset by the energy efficiency savings that owners see on their energy bills. Heat pumps are like two to four times typically more efficient than the traditional technologies. That's a big win for the environment, especially when it comes to heating since tapping into the US as partially green electric grid is far better than the alternative. Even today, if you replace our fossil fuel heating system with an electric heat pump, 
Given the carbon intensity of the electricity grid, you can reduce emissions by about 70% as we move to a cleaner electricity grid that number will only get better. Maintenance company in San Francisco called Gradient is building heat pumps with the customer can install themselves in their window, thereby eliminating high install costs, which are managed as account for about two-thirds of the heat pump's total price, depending on the size layout and location of the building. The total cost of a ductless heat pump can vary widely. But according to Energy Sage, an average is between $3,500-$5,000 per unit, compared to an average of about $550 for a window AC unit. Ductless heat pumps like window ACs control the temperature for a particular room instead of the whole building. The install cost of few pumps is huge. And so, what Gradient System does is it packages a lot of high-efficiency components that exist today in other parts of the sector and a really simple to install and really pleasant teens device. Gradient system is about 30% more efficient than traditional window ACs, plus the refrigerants that it uses are 70% less carbon intensive than standard hydrofluorocarbon refrigerants which are powerful greenhouse gases that often leak into the atmosphere at some point during the life cycle of an air conditioner. Gradient's initial product will cover about half of a customer's heating load and the next product will be capable of fully replacing fossil fuel heating systems. So by eliminating gas and fossil fuel in the homes and electrifying those end users, and coupling that with things like, on-site solar coupled with storage cannot further help to that, we don't have to exercise some of those emergency dirtier sources. But heat pumps aren't the only exciting tech in this space. Another Silicon Valley company Skycool is designing panels that take advantage of a natural phenomenon known as radiative cooling, in which certain materials are able to cast heat into space in the form of infrared light and can therefore stay cooler than the surrounding. So the system itself only uses electricity to run a pump, that pump is used to circulate water through panels, relative to other systems, other electricity consuming components and air conditioners refrigeration systems the pumps are using a much smaller amount of electricity. The cooling effect itself is passive, so it really just needs to be outside and exposed to fresh air. Stifles panels are covered in an advanced plastic film which radiates heat into space, and reflects nearly all the sunlight hitting it. When a liquid like water or another refrigerant is circulated through the panels it sheds heat and naturally cools, that's useful because air conditioning and refrigeration systems expend a lot of energy. Cooling refrigerants Sky Cool's ability to passively cool liquids means that it could integrate with these traditional systems and improve their efficiency. Sky Cool currently has six live deployments, and their next will be at a data center in Sacramento. Businesses that are to be targeted must have cooling systems that are dominant freezer cold storage facilities at supermarkets, their convenience stores, and data centers and data closets. These are the buildings that have the highest energy use of all the buildings that are out there. Essentially, there is a know-how to put buildings on a path to full decarbonization but what is standing in the way is mostly a matter of upfront costs, and a lack of awareness from players across the supply chain. About the benefits and availability of all electric energy efficient appliances, it's in getting the pricing down through that, a volume of production and having the market to absorb that volume. But in the meantime, having tax credits and incentives to buy down and create that market, along with creating the awareness and education, from the homeowners or the end users to the installers or the plumbers. New York-based startups field is trying to address the upfront costs, as well as consumer education. Like Black Power the company provides no money down heat pump installations, as well as weatherization measures like improving insulation and air sealing in smart home tech like lead bolts. The value of this type of home retrofit average is $15,000 to $20,000 and seals gets paid back directly through the homeowner's energy savings. So what has been done the radical aligning of interest with homeowners and also the planet, because if the right equipment is not recommend to the right contractors, a huge sum of money will be lost. That doesn't tie its profits directly to energy savings, the way that others does instead of building owners agree to a set monthly payment schedule, but the conviction that green retrofits will pay for themselves over time is the driving concept behind block power financing model 2. Community centers can cost hundreds of one thousands or even a million dollars, but the company reduces the cost associated with building inspection through its software which analyzes spaces to predict what changes will be most impactful. A software system that has a digital model for millions and millions of billions across the country. So, before someone sets foot in a building, all of the government data of all financial records and all of the engineering records are all aggregated into a database that will allows predictions about the kinds of green energy equipment that will make the most sense for a building. When it comes to marketing, Black Power has the environmental impact of green tech, but also emphasizes how it will make a building more profitable. 
The secret to getting homeowners to decarbonize is focusing on how retrofits will increase comfort. I think the historical messages of save money on your energy bills, or save the planet have actually undersold the value of the improvements themselves, which is improving people's quality of life at home, remaining agrees that this is the approach to take. When people shop for an AC today, we almost never see the efficiency or environmental impact, come into their decision. And so what we've seen is what people want to buy now is a better experience and that for most window AC customers means getting your window back and having a quiet system. In the end, whatever gets property owners to go green doesn't really matter, it's just that they do it one way or the other. The US definitely can't reach its ambitious goal of carbon neutrality by 2050 unless we electrify buildings, make them a whole lot more energy efficient, and fully green the electric grid as President Biden hopes to do by 2035. So we need to have a moonshot goal, because unless you set up an audacious goal solutions don't come out so I'm very optimistic that we can get to decarbonize our new buildings, perhaps by 2030, 2035, but getting the existing building stock completely decarbonized is the one that's going to take a little bit longer. In May, the White House announced the Initiative for Better Energy Emissions and Equity, known as the E3 Initiative to invest $10 million and accelerating the research and adoption of heat pump technologies, while also focusing on developing greener refrigerants and smarter tools to diagnose problems and inefficiencies with heating and cooling systems, and while Biden's original infrastructure bill called for bold investment in climate adaptation and clean tech, even if Congress doesn't pass these initiatives where it says there's still plenty of ways that policymakers and the private sector can work together to decarbonize buildings. I think that President Biden can lead a charge to aggregate data and get the buildings into an open source database so that any contractor or any firm that wants to come in and help fix their building to access the data easily and give them a set of solutions. We can lead the charge of computer scientists and developers who are alarmed or concerned about climate change to interrogate that data to clean it and start to analyze how to deploy clean energy. Certainly incentives like tax credits and subsidies for property owners, manufacturers and installers who opt to go green can help too. The same can be said for federal procurement programs in which the government commits to buying a set amount of a particular product, be it an electric car, or an electric heat pump, thereby risking the production of clean tech driving manufacturing scale up and lowering costs, but because the politics of the energy transition are always messy. Many say they just don't want adoption at their tech to be dependent upon government action. One of the goals is to build a system that's attractive to customers because of the experience, even without incentives, because we don't have time to wait. We have to start now, but not to be all doom and gloom about it. The buildings are an opportunity for us, that should be permissible, with technologies that are ready and at hand.